Today, we will talk about how to start a medical transportation business. Let's have a look at the details. If you're thinking about starting a medical transportation company, that's great news. You've figured out that there's an increasing need for this kind of service which appears likely to continue growing, with no signs of slowing down. Step 1. Make sure you have enough money. With all of the associated regulatory startup costs, it can take hundreds of thousands of dollars to start your own non-emergency medical transportation company. You need to register your business, cover legal, insurance, permit, and licensing fees, acquire a facility, purchase vehicles, pay utility bills and wage expenses, launch a website, and cover other costs. Before you move forward any further, make sure you have enough money to launch the business. If not, you may have to sell some equity in your business to an investor, apply for a small business loan, or obtain a business line of credit. Step 2. Pick the right location. Look for locations that have dialysis centers, hospitals, nursing homes, and other senior assisted living facilities nearby. That's where you'll get most of your revenue. Don't forget that some students need non-emergency medical transportation, too. You may also be able to secure contracts through local school districts. Step 3. Take care of legal and insurance aspects. First things first, you may want to incorporate your medical transport company to start things off. You'll also need to figure out which kind of driver's license you need to take people from one location to another, which varies on a state-by-state -state basis. Additionally, you'll need general liability insurance, car insurance, and workers' compensation insurance in the event one of your employees is injured on the job. Step 4. Figure out how to market your business. Do some research to find out how much your competitors charge their customers and price your services with that in mind. Next, you'll want to send out some marketing information to prospective customers to let them know that you're open for business. Offering discounts is a great way to encourage people to give you a shot. Use social media to promote those posts. That way, when people are looking for a company that offers your services, they'll find you. Step 5. Make sure you can collect payments. Every business needs the ability to collect payments. Medicaid payments will most likely be a major portion of your total receipts. The laws vary from county to county, so make sure you're familiar with the ones that affect your business before launching. Aside from the Medicaid patients, some clients will be able to pay bills by themselves either by writing checks or paying with cash on the spot. If you run into cash flow problems while waiting for checks to come in, you can use an invoice financing service like Fundbox to advance payments on outstanding invoices. Step 6. Hire employees as your business grows. As you get more patients and land bigger contracts, you'll need to hire enough drivers, coordinators, and support staff to handle the higher volume. To ensure your patients get the quality of service they're looking for, do your best to hire the best and brightest experienced workers you can find. Assuming you're the CEO, you'll need to hire drivers and an office manager. Depending on how big your company gets, you may also need to hire a dedicated marketing team, a finance department, and a human resources manager. Step 7. Stay on top of changing laws. At the time of this writing, the ACA is the law of the land. To ensure your company never runs afoul of the law, it is imperative that you stay informed about any new regulations coming down the pike that may affect your business. You will also want to stay abreast of potential changes to tax laws that impact your company. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you like our videos.